Hi, and welcome back to Let's Bake and Cook Stuff. Today I'm making hummus. It's delicious uh, dip made with garbanzo beans. Other people call them chickpeas. Either word is right. Um, and I'm going to first drain them. Don't do away with the liquid because wait till you see what I'm going to do with it after. I'm gonna, I might need some of it for the dip, but it's actually kind of a cool thing you can do with the liquid. You can actually make a meringue out of it. I make meringue cookies out of them. You can make uh, pavlova and it's uh, completely vegan. And for people who are uh, vegan, it's kind of a cool way to enjoy a delicious, light, airy treat. So these are gonna go right into the food processor. This is one of the things that makes this such an easy dish. And we're gonna add in about, I'm gonna put these four cloves of garlic in there. These are pretty good size. I don't know if you can tell how big they are, but these are real good size. So I'm gonna put uh, all four of these in there. The good thing about this dip is that you can put as much garlic or as little garlic as you choose. Okay. So if you don't want a whole lot of garlic, if you don't want a whole lot of garlic in your, um, or if you don't want any garlic in it, you don't have to put it in there. You can put, or you can put as much as you want. I wanted to kind of do this the whole thing rather than have everything ready like I normally do, so you can see how this stuff is done. You know, if you will um, sort of mash it a little bit, mash the garlic a little bit, it makes it a little bit easier to get that skin off of there. And this looks like this is actually two stuck together, so I'm gonna, oh. Oh, that was like a bonus one. It's like, kinda like when you get a double yolk egg. <laughs> Put it right in there. Okay. Okay, now we're gonna chop this up first. Let these go. take this insert off and then I'm going to add in I'm gonna start with about a tablespoon of olive oil and then I might up it so don't hold me to that one tablespoon close to the two I'm gonna put some lemon juice in here about the juice of a half a lemon to start, and then we're going to taste it and see how it tastes after after we add that. All right, oops, seed got in there. All right, so that's probably okay. You can see after adding that lemon juice, it's a little more like what you've probably seen as hummus, right? Okay, now we still have to add the tahini and uh, some, some uh, herbs and spices. So I'm gonna add a quarter of a cup of tahini. Hi, <laughs> I forgot to mention that tahini, a lot of people don't know what that is. It's a sesame paste. It's actually um, it's the same thing as peanut butter, but instead of peanuts, it's, they're using sesame seeds. So it's just ground up sesame seeds, just like peanut butter is ground up peanuts. And you can find this pretty much anywhere now. Um, I got this at, at my local grocery store. So anyway, I just wanted to come back and tell you what tahini is, because some people don't know. So now you know. Okay. Oh, this looks so good. Now, you could add anything to this. I, I saw a fight going on on um, some kind of channel. I can't remember what it was. And the people were so upset because there is a specific, this is the basic, how you make hummus 
and other people were trying to use um, uh, like different kinds of beans or they were adding other kinds of vegetables in there and other people were saying well that's not true hummus hummus is you know the the beans and the the tahini and the olive oil and the garlic and the, the spices oh what else I wanted to add to was a little bit of the turmeric I have um, this turmeric I'm gonna add it's gonna make it kind of yellowish I'm just gonna add about a Eh, about a half a teaspoon, a little bit, a little bit of a palm, palmful. I'm gonna let that go, and then, uh, and that's really for no other reason. Just I uh, like the color of it, and also it's going to, um, you know, turn works good for you. So, oh, and I wanted to add a little bit of celery salt too, because you know I'm adding celery salt to everything. So, um, and probably a half a teaspoon of celery salt. And again, that's you know, if you want the basic one that's you know the one that everybody knows and loves so go ahead and don't add those last two let's we'll taste it and see if it needs any other spices or oh that's really good um i can't think of anything to add to it it tastes delicious so we're going to go ahead and put this into a nice little serving bowl Oh, that's good. Yeah, that turmeric does it. Adds just a little bit of a, um, it's not a spicy, like a smoky flavor, I guess. That's how I would describe it. It's really good. And by the time I start serving this, I probably will add a little bit more of that water. It's kind of thick, but I don't mind it thick. I like it. This is really good. It's good for you. It's got the, the high protein in the in the garbanzo beans. It's, you know, the garbanzo beans also are high in fiber. Uh, the turmeric's good for you. Garlic's good for you. Uh, you could maybe leave the salt out if you didn't, if you were cutting back on your salt intake. Um, I like salt, and it, there are other salt substitutes you could use. I've been using this, um, oh, it's a salt, it's a seasoning that you use in case you don't want salt and it's got all kinds of stuff in it that's not salt. <laughs> and uh, I've been using that a lot lately. And so that was just the basics. The only thing I added different was a little bit of celery salt and a little bit of um, turmeric. That's something that isn't necessarily always in it. Mm. I just bought these pitas at the store. They're little tiny little uh, almost like bite-sized pitas. These are great with hummus. Um, you just dip it in. You can toast these. You can put them in the oven maybe five minutes in the oven at like about 350, 375. Mm, that's so good. Um, I hope you try this. Next up is going to be guacamole. We're doing a hummus versus guacamole uh, show and see uh, who likes what best. I don't know if I can choose because I really like guacamole, but I like the idea that hummus is maybe a little more uh, nutrition nutritious for you. So I don't know. You decide. Thanks for watching. See you in a minute. Crudités. Okay, now it's time for guacamole. Guacamole. I love, 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 love guacamole. I love when you go to the certain uh, Mexican food restaurants and they make it by your table side. I love making it myself. The only thing I don't like about it is, you, you know, once you make it, you have made a commitment and, uh, you know, to eat it. <laughs> because uh, once you make it, it doesn't last very long uh, without turning brown. And it doesn't taste as good once it turns brown. I went ahead and ate it one time. I thought, well, it's just brown, so what? It's still fresh. I just made it yesterday kind of thing, and uh, it was not uh, It was not still good. So I don't recommend that you um, eat brown guacamole. Just like you don't eat yellow snow, don't eat brown guacamole. <laughs> and I want to cut these pretty small dices, and in fact, if I would have thought ahead of it, I would have probably smashed it with the uh, the garlic press, but I didn't think ahead. And I don't know. Every once in a while, I like to just get in here and just chop, chop, chop up some stuff. Um, I 
thing about guacamole too is, I mean, it's so good, right? And, and avocados really have uh, come a long way as far as being, you know, touted as health, a healthy food. So, um, and we're really not putting anything else in here that wouldn't be considered healthy, I don't think. So, I'm gonna, I'm gonna use probably three of these four avocados. And the only reason I'm not gonna use, the only reason I'm not gonna use all of them is because um, we're not gonna be able to eat enough guacamole for, with three avocados. So um, I don't, I don't wanna waste it. But I would use four if I was having friends over, having a party. And I'm gonna take that little tip off of there. A little crunchy in there. Um, and I'm using cilantro. My friend Gail, I've mentioned her before. We went out to dinner one time at, uh, where was it? El Torito? Some Mexican food restaurant, I can't remember. And he, we, she was gonna get the guacamole made at this table side and she <laughs> told them, do not put any cilantro in it. <laughs> so, I like cilantro, so I'm putting it in here. And that's the good thing about cooking for yourself. That's probably the best thing about cooking at home for yourself. A lot of people are cooking at home nowadays because of the lockdown and everything. And the best thing about cooking for yourself is you can do it your way. If you want cilantro, put some cilantro. I, my daughter and I love it. When I make salsa, I put a whole, the whole bunch of, of cilantro in my, in, my, in my salsa. So, but if you don't like it, you can certainly leave it out. And that's, again, that's the best thing about making your own food is you can make it how you like it. Um, I, I like cooking. I'm getting kind of tired of it. I'm not going to lie. I'm getting kind of tired of cooking every day and then, uh, never going out. This, um, I've had enough of this lockdown. I'm ready for this virus to be over. We'll see. Okay. Um, so then I'm just going to take a little bit of pepper, probably about a half a teaspoon, a little bit of lime juice, a little bit of salt. I'm putting, I already cut one tomato and then I'm going to cut this other tomato. I'm cutting these in, in pretty small dices. I want a big chunk of tomato in there. So, and then <laughs> watch what I do with the tomatoes. My friend was over the other day and I was making salsa and uh, I did this and she said, oh, I've never done that. She goes, I just take the seeds out. And uh, I, what I do is I, oh, here, maybe you can see what I'm doing. I'm just chopping these up pretty small. Um, if you don't want tomatoes in here, if you want to put canned tomatoes in here, if you have a can of diced tomatoes and you don't feel like chopping them up or you don't have any fresh tomatoes, um, put, some, put some canned tomatoes in there. You can certainly do that. I don't think anybody would be mad about it. I used to make my salsa with canned tomatoes. Now all I'm going to do right here is I'm just going to squeeze out a bunch of the liquid. And that's just so that my guacamole is not all liquidy, okay? I want it all watery. And there's a lot of water in these tomatoes. You can see that. That's just from that handful right there. Okay. Now I have a friend who made guacamole and all she did to make it was add she chopped up the, the the avocados, and then she just added a, a jar of, of uh, store-bought salsa, and it was delicious. All right, I'm just gonna use half of this onion. And you guys know I like a lot of onion, but this is a this is a good size onion, and we're not making that much guacamole. I usually always peel that top layer, like peel the you know obviously that skin off, and then that top layer. It seems like whenever I leave it on there, I always am disappointed in it because it's like rubbery. So, and these I want super, super tiny. And if you wanted to add onion powder or a minced onion, you know, dried minced onion in, in this instead, you could do that if you're having trouble finding onions. I normally, by the way, will put red onion in here, but I guess there's been a recall on some red tomatoes, in case you haven't heard. And I don't know, I did see them for sale in my store, so I don't know if that meant that those were okay or they just hadn't got to those yet. So I didn't want to take chances on it, especially since you're eating it raw. And so this is just going to get smashed with a fork, a regular dinner fork. 
and I'm smashing it on purpose with the tomatoes and everything in there so that those get incorporated with the uh, with the um, avocados. I'm smashing this up like this with the tomatoes and the onions in there to smash them so that they get incorporated with the tomatoes. Spices I want to add to this. All right, I'm going to add about a teaspoon of coriander, which, if you don't know, is ground up cilantro seeds. It's actually the seed of the cilantro. Some people use coriander and cilantro for the same thing, and it's not the same thing. About a teaspoon of cocoa powder. Uh, cocoa powder. Now that would be good, right? Chili powder. And these are. Uh, again, flexible. When I tell you they're flexible, that means you can do what you want. Uh, you want a little bit more, you want a little bit less, do it. Um, but a teaspoon of ground cumin. Okay, and now these are going to get stirred. And while I was over there getting the spices, I realized that I also did not put in my jalapenos. Now, I don't have any jalapenos today, but in my garden, I have some serrano chilies. Uh, actually quite a few of them this year. I'm kind of excited because last year I think we got like three if The plant cost more than three chilies would have cost. Well, I'm sure of it because three chilies probably would have cost like 25 cents Right down the center See that and then right down the center turning it a quarter turn and then right down the center there and then I'm leaving the seeds in I'm making it nice and spicy. That's kind of a yucky edge there. I'm gonna cut that off all right, and then I'm just going to chop this pretty finely. And I'm actually doing that more than anything because I don't want to touch the inside <laughs> with my fingers. And I, I, didn't, uh, I don't have any gloves right now. I will sometimes uh, use gloves to chop that up. I'm going to put two of these in here. And again, this is a flexible recipe. Put one in here and see how hot it is. See if you like it like that. See if you want to add some more. Or, um, you know, put, you know, you don't have to put any in there if you don't want to. It's, again, that's the best thing about cooking at home. See, my friend Gail, she's going to make this guacamole, but she's not going to put cilantro in it. <laughs> All right, so that is that, and I need... Here's the cilantro. This is not the whole bunch. Now, it's, it's different for me with guacamole than it is with salsa. If I'm making salsa, I'll put the whole bunch in there, but when I'm making guacamole, I wanna just put in just the, about a half a bunch. Okay. And um, also, I will use the stems. The stems taste just as delicious as the leaves. The only thing is you gotta make sure you chop them up pretty good. Right, so, and any of these ingredients, any of them that you don't want, don't use them. Any that you do and you want more, add more. Supposedly, if you put the seed from the avocado in the middle, it will keep it from browning. Um, I don't know if that's true or not. It's just going to keep it from browning. It might slow the browning process down a little bit, but it's not going to keep it from browning. It's going to it's going to turn brown if you have it too long. Uh, so you definitely want to uh, make it and then use it. You don't want to um, make it and then think you're going to store it for a couple of days because it's just not going to be as good in a couple of days. And now we've done guacamole and we've done hummus. You tell me which one you like the best. Again, for me, I like them both the same. I think they both taste delicious. I love them both. I love them both with uh, chips. I love them both with um, pita. I really kind of more gravitate towards the more with the, the hummus with the vegetables than I would with the guacamole. But I, I, I tend to swing more towards the hummus just because it has the protein and the fiber. But don't take away from avocado. It has the good fat in it. It has lots of vitamins. Uh, it, it is good for you. So, um, and then all the other stuff we put in there too, the tomatoes and the, the cilantro. Cilantro is supposed to help cleanse your liver. Uh, it's, you know, they're both good for you. It's just um, a matter of which one is best. Which one do you like best? I can't choose. All right, let's try. Why did 
del guacamole. Well, not surprisingly, you know, it's perfect. <laughs> what can I say? It's delicious. Without double dipping, I'm gonna try in the hummus. Mm. They're both really good. Try them, let me know what you think. You make a decision, you make these both. Let me know how which one you like the best. I'd love to hear from you. Thanks, please like and subscribe. Leave any comments you have, and if you have any suggestions about what you'd like to see on the channel, please leave them in the comment section. I'd love to see them. Thanks for watching.